Hey guys, Farmall here. Hi, what you doing? It's kind of a nice day out. It was nice yesterday. Uh, we're out here in the barn. It's just a little organ update. Um, I got, I have two pipe organs that I took out of churches. Uh, one is a Buell, uh, 1925 or 1926. Took that out of Utica. And the second one was uh, worked on by Fazakis or Fazakis or something like that. I don't know who the original manufacturer was. <clears throat> and that's about the same era, both electro-pneumatic. And then I got some extra parts from a third organ that I took out of Remsen, New York. Um, actually, I didn't take it out. They, uh, the, the church people took it out. And uh, I bought the console, four or five wind chests, and just some miscellaneous pipes, just for spare parts. Mostly I wanted the console because it had um, good keyboards and... Um, a nice uh, stop action electromagnetic stop action unit in it and um, key contacts that was more had been uh, repla replaced and these are the wind chests and I'm taking them apart to get pieces out of them and because uh, these are direct action so that's what they look like inside each one of those is a magnet a direct action magnet and I'm pulling all them out. There's even some mouse poop and everything in here. But um, I'm pulling those out, testing them all, and putting them in this box. Um, so far, I've got uh, I think there's a hundred and uh, about 130 I've taken out so far in that box. And there's probably another 60 in here. So 50, 60 of them in here. And there's one more that I haven't done. So that's what I'm working on now. Um, just to recycle them, I'm going to take them out of here and probably use them to rebuild the wind chest that I've already set up out here in the barn, at least a couple of the ranks, so that they'll play. Um, but other than that, that's where we're at. Um, basically all I do is cut the wiring out and then unsolder it off from each, each of the uh, magnets. And that's kind of boring and monotonous and tedious. So I'm not going to film that, but uh, I'll get them all out. And once they're all, uh, actually I'll get them all on disconnected. And then uh, I'll probably film a little bit of testing a couple of them just so you can see how they function. So i got the Oregon power supply, one of them set up here with a short piece of wire on it. So I go down through and test them all before I, before I uh, pull them so that I don't, if there's any that are bad, I'll keep them for parts. But uh, I'm separating them aside. So anyway, back in a bit. All right, I got all the... Uh, wiring cleaned off of these and I tested them all and they all work I'll just show you give them 12 volts all that does is it lets air when that pulls up this whole area is all charged with air from the blower and when this lifts up it allows the air to go out underneath that leather and felt stopper out the hole and blow the pipe as the pipes would sit on this side in that hole. So it's real simple how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and take all these off here with the screw gun, sort them, and put them in the box. They all were good, none of them were bad. I did have two bad ones out of one of the other chests. Um, this one was arcing down inside. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of like, looks like it's hot, been hot right there by my thumb. It was you could see a little blue spark down in there. It was working, but it was arcing down in there. So I marked that one as bad. And this one was doing the same thing. It was arcing inside somewhere. You can see maybe it'll focus. You can see that it's like discolored at the one end where it's gotten hot. So I marked that one as bad and put those aside for parts. So I'm gonna get this stripped down and get the there's one more wind chest. I'm gonna get that one stripped down and depending on what time it is, maybe we'll start uh, putting them into the other chest. Alright guys, I got the organ apart. Mostly, some of it. All the pipes are out. Um, I just wanted to show you so it looks like down inside the wind chest. These are the magnets. Um, and then when the magnet comes on, it allows air to escape through these holes. And these holes connect to the bottom side of, of this board, which I'll show you over on the other side of the barn. Okay, the holes that I showed you there communicate with these holes here in this top board. 
and this is where the pipes sat. And basically, underneath each of these panels, which I'll pull the screws out and show you, um, this communicates with a, a pouch diaphragm underneath here. There's um, springs underneath each one of these that push the pouch up. And you can sort of see in there, there's a felt seal that seals against the bottom of the pipe. Seals against that hole. So there's air in here and it can't get out. And when the valve opens, it allows that pouch, which is mounted in here, to collapse, thus allowing the air out to the pipe. So let me get the screws out of this and I'll show you that. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. All right, there's a pipe sets on each one of the other side of each one of these holes. And when you press the key on the, the keyboard, it energizes the magnet here, which allows this little port to vent. When that port vents, it allows the, the air to pass, the air to actually collapse this, because there's air pressure in here. So it allows the air pressure to collapse this, which thus opens the hole here, which allows the air out to play the pipe. So there's all that happening every time you press a key. You got this to actuate, you got this to actuate, and then you got the pipe to sound. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace all that with these. And these mount right over the holes so that when you press the key, this is the only thing that moves. It's a lot quicker action and it's a little bit more reliable. Plus this is in need of being what they call re-leathered. Each one of these little discs is a piece of leather, very thin leather and they wear out and they get holes in them. Um, this one somebody's patched with something, some kind of glue or something. But there was a couple that didn't sound right. This one's been patched. This one's been patched. You know, so um, it costs a lot of money to re-leather because it's all leather and it's time consuming. You gotta peel all these off, clean it all up, um, put new paper or new cardboard on this side to hold the spring. Cause this is just really thin paper you can see I can poke my whole finger right through that paper then the spring will come out and then that won't work plus if that leaks air then these won't work and you can see somebody's gone through and passed a couple of them here with some uh, cardboard but and this one looks like it's been patched with masking tape <clears throat> but uh, anyway so that's what we're gonna do with all the ranks as as many as I've got um, these direct these direct action magnets for um, I have, um, uh, where's my list? I got 116 of the 11 sixteenths, I have 200 of the 7 eighths, and I have 12 of the 1 inch that I pulled out of those other chests. I also have all the screws. Shoot, there's probably $25 worth of screws there. But anyway, um, so that's where, where we're at. Um, I'll probably get them all mounted on here. I gotta clean up this gasket material off of here and uh, this part here pretty much just goes away. It's kind of a shame because it's the original old style technology but it's very costly and expensive you know and time consuming to rebuild them to, you know with the leathers and uh, I don't have the money for the leather. Oh well I just tore that one apart. There so you can see what's in there. nifty little springs. I don't know what they're good for, but maybe I'll sell them on eBay. A whole box full of springs. Anyway, there's that. I'll catch up with you when I get some of the other magnets mounted. It's kind of a shame because it's the original old style technology, but it's very costly and expensive, you know, and time consuming to rebuild them to, you know, with the leathers. And uh, I don't have the money for the leather. Oh, well, I just tore that one apart. There, so you can see what's in there. Those are nifty little springs. I don't know what they're good for, but maybe I'll sell them on eBay. A whole box full of springs. Anyway, there's that. I'll catch up with you when I get some of the other magnets mounted. Well, I got 13 of them done. Um, I'm going to head in for dinner now, but uh, that's what she's going to look like. Um, first three are the one inch. These are all seven eighths. I'm going to probably run seven eighths down to maybe here. And then uh, these will be the five eighths. 
the middle six pipes are not or middle middle octave is not used on this rank um, and I got a board on the other side plugging this hole um, I'm probably going to cut a board and put it here on the inside to cover all these holes and this hole and everything all at once and then the outside will be smooth and you won't see that but it doesn't much matter because the <clears throat> the uh, rack board actually has a big uh, spot cut out of here I don't know why apparently there was something else in there at one time before I got the organ so anyway I got 13 of the um, Reisner direct action magnets mounted and we'll go from there so thanks for watching and tune in tomorrow.